onward from the late 1920s, a person walking down Old Orchard Street toward the beach was surrounded by a treasure trove of amusements. It's easy to imagine dazzled children thinking where do we start? It seemed as though each side held an amusement empire in fierce competition to outdo the other, and that was essentially true. On the left as one faced the ocean was the white way, or fun spot, and the duffy block of amusements and the pier. On the right was Palace Playland with its great pavilion filled with rides and games, an amusement city in itself augmented by a field of outdoor rides beside it. Let's start with a look at the right side of the street as it developed through the years, going back to the good old days, the big ride was the Jack Rabbit Coaster. Located on the corner of Old Orchard Street and West Surf, overlooking the beach, the coaster opened in 1918 and carried riders for a little more than a decade until 1929. Bigger thrills were coming, situated nearby were two of the most popular rides ever built the Whip and the Caterpillar. The Cyclone was introduced to Old Orchard in 1930. The coaster was built by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company, the product of designer Herbert Schmeck and construction supervisor James L. Martz. The ride continued on the beach until that fateful October day in 1948 when a fire sparked and the adjacent old mill brought it down. Not far from the Cyclone coaster was the old mill. From all indications, this was built by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company possibly a year or so after the completion of the Cyclone Coaster. Mill rides were often situated beneath large roller coasters as a way of utilizing the large area of land occupied by the ride. The mill facade prominently featured the Laughing Sal figure along with other animated funhouse decorations, all of which were products of PTC, an overhead view of the old mill tunnel. This was a relatively compact ride of its type with an unusual double back configuration. Part of the tunnel passed beneath the tracks of the cyclone, which would have an unfortunate consequence in 1948. Street map shows the location of the Palace Arcade and the Old Mill on Old Orchard Street, with the latter's proximity to the cyclone coaster. Bystanders in the off season of October, 1948 appear entertained by the burning mill, which had been renamed Laugh in the Dark. Its destruction would clear the area for the Palace Playland outdoor ride lot. A hill of the cyclone can be seen at left, soon to be ignited. Before it ended, the fire would dev over 10 years ago when editor George Lacrosse and I first met to discuss the formation of Laugh in the Dark, we were amazed to learn that we had both separately visited Old Orchard Beach in childhood. George had spent five days there with his grandparents in 1961. We recalled with uncanny detail each dark ride and fun house that had thrilled us and how nothing we'd ever seen could compare to the Palace Playland Pavilion. The massive entrance of the pavilion at the corner of Old Orchard Street and West Grand Avenue invited patrons to stroll through a building that extended back an entire city block. At that time, it was operated by Bernard Osher and held kid rides, a dodgem, a whip, all kinds of games, arcade machines and food stands including a full cocktail lounge. In addition, Palace had another group of rides and concessions in a large lot outside the building. In this area, Palace Playland seemed to have a policy of moving the furniture around every season. I noticed that some of the rides I'd seen the year before had been shifted to different locations when I returned. George had these memories of the Palace Playland Pavilion, I recall the inside being very noisy and that one had to yell too communicate. There were mostly kiddie rides but there was an adult whip. The games of chance were along the walls and close to the rides which was probably planned so that adults could play games and watch their kids at the same time. I'm pretty sure I rode that whip a few times in view of my grandparents who were playing games. At age 7 I was too. Big for kid rides. There was a Dodge more scooter in there but I didn't ride it. My grandfather took me on the one that was down that side street, well in back of the big fun house behind Noah's Ark, views of Palace Playland in the early 50s. This photo shows the entrance to the pavilion in the background. The building extended back beyond the left edge of the photo. On the foreground corner was Bricky's Spa, a popular food stand with a dine and dance hall on the second level run by the Brickyatus family. The Cyclone Coaster had stood behind it. Brickies was the only structure on the block to survive the 1948 fire. The Palace Playland building burned in the 1948 fire and was rebuilt. 
It burned again in the fire of 1972 and was rebuilt yet again. As Old Orchard Beach's primary amusement park, Palace Playlands Amusement Pavilion still operates today as does its even larger lot of outdoor rides. Standing in Old Orchard Street and looking toward the Palace Playland ride lot in the 40s. The rocket ride sits next to concession buildings near Brookis Spa. In later years, this spot would be home to four different carousels. The interior of the Palace Pavilion showing the Haiti ride manufactured by Spilmer Engineering Corporation of North Toawada, NY. The Haiti was somewhat like a combination of two tilt a whirls and a whip ride. Carousel in Palace Playland Pavilion. This ride, Philadelphia Toboggan Company No. 84, began operation originally in Hapilad Hastings Park in Vancouver, BC in 1928. It later made the trip across country, stopping first for a new paint job at PTC's factory and then on to Old Orchard in 1935. Here it operated on lease into the mid-40s until being reclaimed and rebuilt by PTC. Fortunately, it was removed prior to the Palace Playland fire of 1948. The ride was sold to Palisades Amusement Park in Fort Lee, NJ. When that park closed in 1971, the ride was acquired by Canada's Wonderland Park in Ontario where it continues to operate today. In the 50s, a small gabled carousel pavilion stood near the sidewalk on the palace lot. Below left, the pavilion held the popular German or European carousel with miniature buses and motorcycles. At another time this building contained an Allen Herskel three-row standard carousel. Below right, when Cleveland's Euclid Beach Park closed in 1969, its grand carousel, the ornate four-row 1910 Philadelphia Toboggan Company No. 19, was purchased by Palace Playland and opened in this new large steel building which replaced the gabled pavilion in 1971. This beautiful ride operated until 1997 when it was purchased by a Euclid Beach Park Memorial Group and returned to Cleveland. It is in the process of being restored and is scheduled to be displayed in the Cleveland area as a memento of Euclid Beach Park. Currently, a carousel built by the Chance Ride Manufacturing Company turns in this building at Palace Playland.